Hello, boys and girls. It's good to see you. I hope that you all are doing well and staying healthy and safe. Uh, we miss you at Spring Hope. And um, each week, uh, we will be bringing you lessons, the specialist. And um, so that means once a week, Miss House will be posting a music lesson of some sort. So this week's lesson will be a review of the things that we were doing right before you guys left. Um, that was a review of the instruments of the orchestra. So let's get started. And then at the end of this lesson, we will have a culminating reading that will bring it all together. Okay. All right. So right before you guys left, we were doing um, instruments of the orchestra. Uh, fourth graders were finishing up a unit and fifth graders were doing um, a review to get ready for the Tar River Orchestra performance, which I'm really sad about not going, but anyway. So, so today we'll review the orchestra family, the orchestra family reunion. So there are four instruments, in, um, four instrument families in the orchestra. The first we will review is the string family. Um, there are the violin, the viola, the cello, and the double bass, of which are all made the same uh, or have the same body shape. The violin is the smallest and the double bass is the largest. So the violin, the violin being the smallest has the highest pitch and the double bass being the largest has the lowest pitch. Of course, we also include the harp there and um, the harp is strummed or plucked. Um, it's a beautiful instrument, but it is also a string instrument as well. All right, then we have the brass family. The brass family has four instruments in it. It has the trumpet, the French horn, the trombone, and the tuba. And this picture is a little deceiving because it looks like the trombone is the largest instrument, but actually the tuba is the largest instrument. The trumpet is the smallest. So if the trumpet is the smallest, Following the rule that we learned earlier, the, the smallest instrument has the highest pitch and the largest instrument has the lowest pitch. And that is the case for the brass family. The smallest instrument, the trumpet, has plays the highest sounds and the tuba has the lowest sounds. All right, then we move right on to the woodwind family. The woodwind family has two subgroups in it, okay? It has a single reed family and a double reed family. Remember that the single reed is a little bitty thin piece of wood that the player uses in the mouthpiece and it puts in their mouth. Um, the, single weed in, the single reed instruments are the clarinet and um, the saxophones. Those instruments just have a single piece of wood that's in their mouthpiece. The double reed instruments are the oboe, the English horn, and the bassoons. They have two pieces of wood that are put together that look like the flattened straw that we talked about in class. The piccolo and the flute are the two instruments that are no longer made of wood. They have no wood in them at all. They're actually made of metal now, but they are belong to the woodwind family. You have to have wind to play them. So they belong to the woodwind family, the piccolo and the flute. Remember, fourth graders, we talked about how those that the flute was actually probably the oldest instrument known was made of, of the flute was not made of bone. Um, cavemen had most likely hollowed bone out. So I'm not sure why we would, I guess because of the wind. That's right. We discussed that because of the wind. So that's why the flute and the piccolo belong to the wood wind family. All right, now we have the most mixed up family of the, of the orchestra is the percussion family. The percussion family contains instruments in it that are hit, shaken, or scraped. So all the instruments that are in the family, you either hit them to make their sound, you shake them to make their sound, or you scrape them to make their sound. So um, all, just about all world instruments would belong to the percussion um, family. Uh, most drums from Africa, the, the djembe drum, um, a lot of uh, the sitar, which the sitar might would be a, 
uh, um, from India would be a string instrument. But there's lots of instruments um, that are world instruments that would be percussive. Anyway, so all the instruments in Miss House's music room are percussion instruments. Um, so there's a lot there. The maraca, I made a homemade maraca while I'm here. Got to make music at the house. Um, the tambourine, the triangle, the snare drum, chimes, xylophone, cymbals. All of those are percussion instruments. Now you do have two subgroups in that. You have the... Um, non-pitched which would be like the maraca that means i can't play a song on the maraca it's just sort of a sound and then you have the xylophone where i could actually hit one of the mallets and play a tune like mary had a little lamb or i could play a song and you would recognize it so anyway pitched or unpitched in the percussion family as well all right, so we did leave one person out, or one important thing out of the instrument of the orchestra or the orchestra, and that is the conductor. Now we've been doing the um, Luigi's baton instrument family reunion. And so if Luigi's baton is doing the talking, then the conductor would have been Luigi. So the conductor is someone in charge of an orchestra or choir who marks time and signals musicians or singers when, when and how to play or sing. Now, a conductor doesn't just stand in front of the orchestra and wave his hands. Those movements that they make um, actually shows the musicians what beat they're on. So like Miss House at the beginning of a lesson will go one, two, ready, go. She's actually counting the beats. One, two, three, four. Now, if she was to do the, the conducting, it would be one, two, three, four. And that's how musicians in a choir or in an orchestra know when to come in or what beat to play on. There's lots of different markings or in music you have one, two, three, four. You could have one, two, three, one, two, three. You could have a one, two, one, two. You could have a one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Lots of different things. So when you're a musician, you take conducting classes and they teach you how to be a conductor. And that's a very important job for the orchestra because it's like their leader. They brush up the musicians and get them ready to play or perform for an audience. Now, we put all those people together and that's how we create or they create an orchestra. A beautiful piece of music comes together when all of those groups play together, the brass, the string, the woodwind, the percussion, and they're led by the conductor. Today, to end this unit on instruments of the orchestra, we're going to listen to a book called The Remarkable Farkle McBride. And we'll get to hear all the instruments of the orchestra as John Lithgow reads about The Remarkable Farkle McBride. Enjoy! <laughs> Pity the prodigy, Farkle McBride. No matter what instrument poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or bowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing superb violin. He went... And the rest of the fiddles went. The violas went. The cellos went. The bass files went.
and finally the harp when At last all the strings went And as fiddling Farkle continued to play, he heard a small voice that would not go away. Play on, play on, play on, the voice cried. Play on with persistence and passion and pride. Play on from your heart, and the rest will take part. Play on, you remarkable, Arkle McBride. Play on, you remarkable, Arkle McBride. <laughs> But when he was four, Markle played it no more, in spite of his parents beseeching. He shattered the records he used to adore. He smashed up his rods and ripped up every score. He threw fiddle and bow to the living room floor as he shouted, Enough of your screeching! When Farkle was five, his melodical gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift, and he rapidly mastered the flute. He went. And the other flutes went. The oboe went. The clarinet went. The bassoon went. And finally, the piccolo went. At last, all the woodwinds went. father was thrilled, his mother elated, and inside his head the voice sang, unabated. Play on, play on, play on, the voice cried. Play on with persistence and passion and pride. Play on from your heart, and the rest will take part. Play on, you remarkable, Markle McBride. Play on, you remarkable, Markle McBride. <laughs> And at six, Markle flung the flute into the lake, notwithstanding its lyrical drill. He stamped on the dock till you'd think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed. I've had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so whippy and whiny and shrill. <laughs> Sparkle was seven. A different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around, and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He went. <laughs> And the other trombones went. The trumpets went. The French horns went. Finally, the tuba went. At last, all the brass went.
inside Fargo continued to sing. Play on, play on, play on, the boys cried. Play on with persistence and passion and pride. Play on from your heart, and the rest will take part. Play on, you remarkable, Fargo McBride. Play on, you remarkable, Fargo McBride. <laughs> And at age, he declared to his parents' despair, and as everyone else might have guessed, I can't stand the trombone with its laugh and its glare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear. So return it or throw it away, I don't care. I despise it just like all the rest. When Fargo was nine, both his father and mom were bursting with pride and affection. For Fargo learned xylophone, cymbals, and drum, the entire percussionist section. He went. The snare drum went. drumsticks and hammer, the little voice called him above all the clamor. Play on, play on, play on, the voice cried. Play on with persistence and passion and pride. Play on from your heart, and the rest will take part. Play on, you remarkable, Marco McBride. Play on, you remarkable, Marco McBride. <laughs> But soon Fargo fell prey to his usual gloom, despite all the praise and the flattery. First a sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume, then an ear splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't stand it, he bellowed, the crash and the boom and the clang and the bang of the battery. Poor Fargo at ten, howsoever renowned, reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sound. Musicians all playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace him, young Fargo was told. Your cooperation is vital. So he took the baton and he gave the downbeat. And kaboom! The foundations were shaken by glorious music, bombastic and sweet, that filled up the hall and spilled into the street. Music that brought the whole crowd to its feet from the instruments that he had forsaken. They went. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
they went. It's really so sad that my fifth graders didn't get to go to the orchestra, but that was a really great way to get them to have an opportunity to see or to hear at least an orchestra perform. And fourth graders, I hope that you guys get to have an opportunity to go next year because it's a wonderful chance to hear music put together like he talked about. It's a great, it's a great feeling. Anyway, all right, so that's my music lesson for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to the next time. All right, you guys have a great week. I'll see you next time. Bye.